Baby, was y'all ready? The pastor said, let me up in this gig. Let me up in here, honey. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on the video. Listen, I was in my travels, in my travels, just what we thought. Listen, this has been a very interesting week. We started off Sunday night with our re reunion part one for Real Housewives of Potomac season five. The first part of the reunion, we never get a good first part of a reunion. It always drags on and what, baby, it was everything. Boom. Everybody was excited. Let's go on. And then I'm in Pittsburgh. Bam. Snowstorm. I said, oh, well, that was eventful. Then when I thought I couldn't get no worse, baby, Pastor Jamal, a.k.a. Holy Whore, honey. <laughs> At least that's what they done renamed the poor pastor. Poor pastor. They done renamed pastor Holy Whore, honey. He busts out, honey, and he decided to give his own In my travels, honey, I said, okay. Jamal said, let me up in this gig. And I said, what'd you say, Pastor? What'd you say? Jamal, I asked Monique on Sunday night after that reunion, girl, what queen you been hanging with? Now I'm asking you, Pastor, what queen or queen? Have you been hanging with? Baby, Pastor Jamal said, let me up in this gig, honey. You will not blast me with my tea. And honey, the fur went to flying. I knew it was going to be some shit when Pastor Jamal opened up with, you can't bring me receipts when I have cash register. I said, what you say, Pastor? Shut your mouth and keep on talking. <laughs> Baby, he had his little binder just like Monique did. I said, oh, he is on a whole petty mission. And I'm here for it. Then he went on and maybe he started dropping spoilers. I said, well, wait a minute, Jamal. Dropping spoilers about what's to come. So, listen. Real Housewives of Potomac, y'all got it going on, baby, because... Uh, from what the pastors say, it's getting ready to go down. He to drop spoilers on what's going to happen next week on the reunion. I said, I am so here for the pastors season five reunion special. So let me go on and finish telling you what I, what I heard him saying here. A lot of stuff. See, he got to spilling his own tea and clearing up things all of the things that were what he said are misrepresentations of his character and his actions during this the season. Okay? So he was doing that. He was backpedaling all of that stuff. Now, do I believe him? Do you ever believe a pastor? You believe pastors everything they say? If you do, you're foolish. But uh, and especially pastors like him. See, his past. His past says that we shouldn't listen to everything he says. Now, I'm going to be entertained by you. Your past says that you're very entertaining and you can make us feel good. Feel, 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 feel good. Now, that's what your past says, that you've been known for making the earth feel good, honey. That's what your past says. But do you always tell the truth? Your past says that you don't. So that's just how I'm going to ride in, honey. It just, I don't, when I see you, even on the thumbnail, see him in all that white, honey? Very pretty. The outfit. The outfit. But um, that whole get up and that, sh that picture, it's a nice picture. But I don't believe everything about the picture. 
So that's how I handled this whole thing. Whenever I start hearing Jamal Bryant talk, honey, I don't. I just go in it to see how Jamal's going to make me feel good. Or if he could possibly make me feel good, honey. Or if it's going to be pretty. But I don't believe shit that he's saying all the time, honey. It's like, well, I'll listen. We'll, we'll see. Sorry if that, listen, don't judge me. Judge the pastor. Anyway, they ain't calling me holy whore. They call him holy whore. Anyhow, but so he went through all these different things. He talked about, like I said, he cleared up. This is this. This is that. Timelines were, you know, you know, the normal reality show stuff, honey. That didn't happen there. They put it over there. Whatever. The, the fact of the matter is, you and Giselle and that whole situation of this relationship is suspect. It's looked suspect from the beginning. I felt bad for the children. I still feel bad for the children because you, sir, are on here looking crazy in these streets. I feel bad for the congregation because you know that the church doesn't like to be made to look foolish. And right now, they could get their tambourines out because y'all look foolish. Y'all look foolish, honey. Y'all pastor is out here swinging and banging like one of the girls, honey. Y'all look crazy. But, hey, hilarious. Anyway, it's cool. It's cool, sis. And sis. <laughs> Catch that. Anyway, it's fine. That's fine. But uh, the whole little stuff about him and the woman from New York, well, he discredited her, the woman from New York. He didn't deny it. He said, yeah, there is a woman from New York. But I was single and free to mingle. Now, you can talk about whatever timeline you want, but even while you were talking, your timeline passer was lining up with the fact that you were supposed to be with Giselle. So either you lying to us or that bitch is lying to us. I think y'all both was lying to us. I think y'all done played in our face for a whole season. Hey, who am I? I'm just a lowly old reviewer, honey. I, get your bag, and while you get your bag, honey, I'll be catching whatever's falling on the sides, honey. He even insulted us, the bloggers. The bloggers and the vloggers. You threw a little shade at us. I wonder how many people caught that in your post. This was a post on his Instagram, honey. 20-something minutes. He went on. He even threw a little shade. I said, did that bastard just do a, 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 a windmill kick and kick the, blo the bloggers and the vloggers? He did. I felt your shade. I felt your shade. I felt the heel of your uh, your boot swing by me, passer. But that was okay. Because just like I came right up here and did what you said I was going to do. I'm up here talking shit. <laughs> hey, passer. Anyway, who gives a damn? But yeah, he was throwing shade and he said that the woman basically does exist. Said that the woman basically wanted to work for him, wasn't qualified or whatever. Just discredited the woman. I ain't never been to her house. You gonna play the, the text messages? Play all the text messages. Basically, let them know the woman was a lot in pursuit of him and he was a little in pursuit of her. That he was basically stroking his ego with her presence, but she was chasing him heavy and trying to get other things out of him and playing and he wasn't really feeling. Had that woman looking crazy. I said, uh, okay, come on with that. Woman over there in New York. I said, uh, well, she looked foolish. And gave all that, that she definitely gave all that information to Monique because she was in her fifis. I said, okay, Pastor. So he bust her down first. I was like, damn, okay. In the process, didn't realize he was busting down Giselle because you're making her now look like a liar as well as yourself to me. To me. To the eye of the vlogger who watches the show every week, I feel like you and Giselle was playing in our face. So you was windmill kicking and you kind of kicked Giselle 
in her back. You know, she can't dress anyway, so you might have ripped her blouse, but it don't matter because she can't dress no way. So that was that. I said, okay, cool, no problem. Then he made a statement. See, some things that later on you might want to try to backpedal and pussy pop on, which I don't think you will be able to, but you did say, sir, and to Mr. Urant, that you would never, never, film for the Real Housewives of Potomac again. You said that. And you know Bravo Andy. You know how Bravo Andy is? You know Bravo Andy is petty. So you take your swings at Bravo Andy? Good luck with that. Um, you made that statement. I think he gonna make you hold to it. Anyway, so Giselle says, I don't know. <clears throat> Again, sometimes when people come up calling themselves speaking and on your behalf, sometimes they don't be helping. Sometimes they don't be helping. It don't look too good for you right now. From where I said, Giselle, it doesn't look good because what's going to happen going forward? Because that little bit that he gave right there really said that, see, it's called the real housewife. Housewives of Potomac. You're not a housewife. And listening to what he's saying, you're not even on the road to becoming a housewife. But that's what you were leading us to believe. So right now, you're give, it's not called the real singles and the singles life. Single, single, single life. It, it, it's not that. that. It's not that show. Living single went off years ago. This is called the Real Housewives of Potomac. So that don't look so hot for you, sis. Um, yeah. And then also, it made you look disingenuous. You know, I'm just being nice with the words. Just make you look like a goddamn liar. A goddamn liar. You lying about being a first lady even. Double way. Sounds like you were never in a relationship. Sounds like you and the pastor were playing in the faces of us, the viewers, and Bravo. Making Bravo look foolish. Not a good look. So I don't know what's going to happen going forward. Now, let's go into... How Monique basically... Monique, she, she did reach for the pastor. So it's not that the pastor... You know, and it's just the fact that he's a pastor. But for all intents and purposes, honey, he's a man. And a man with feelings. And he wasn't there. Wasn't there. But baby, she tagged the shit out of him. Tagged the shit out of him. Called that man a whore. Blurted out his phone number. Doxed him. You know, <laughs> they had to blur it out. And all that. And all these different things. So he came back, baby. Your husband wasn't in it, but he dragged him right on into it. Oh, Chris, baby, Chris gonna pay the part. And baby Passo walked all up and down Chris's back in his little rant. Talked about uh, Chris's CTE. Chris didn't share that on the show. We didn't know Chris had that going on. See, I've been saying it, though. I hate to be that bitch to say I told you so, but I don't really do tell y'all so. I told you all, all the... That Candace, I've been saying for how many episodes that Candace got that ass whooping, all because Monique had displaced anger. Was I not the one that said that? Listen, Spillerboy TV, go check out the playlist. From the beginning, I've been saying to you all, she whooped Candace's ass because it was the ass whooping that she couldn't give Chris. I said that from the beginning. And now we know. Or we don't know for a fact, but it's been said many times, many ways. Merry Christmas. <laughs> that old Chris got an attitude problem. And he over there being abusive. Verbally. And possibly physically to Miss Monique. Got issues. Said that members of the team, some of your teammates, contacted the good passer to say, don't leave him. Don't. 
don't even respond because he got issues. He got issues pass up. Oh boy, got issues. He like to whoop ass and take names. Don't get your Bible knocked out your hand. Hmm? Your teammates, your friends, call the pass up. Then he said that there was a whole situation where you done snapped out Snapped out on a woman at the Safeway. Not in public. Listen. Now if you whoop Monique's ass up or talk to her like shit up in that big old house y'all live in, that big old beautiful house. See, all that type of shit, it all costs. You're going to pay it on the front end or you're going to pay it on the back end. And sometimes it requires a little bit of hurt feelings and sometimes an ass whooping when you live in those beautiful situations. Sometimes you have kids and shit that you don't really want. And, you know, all that type of stuff comes at a cost sometimes. Most times. I'm just saying. But if you do all that up in that beautiful house, you can hide it from us. But you can't be jumping on no random broads out in the Safeway and think that ain't nobody gonna know about it. Are you serious right now? So he dropped that. I said, oh, Pastor, Pastor coming to play to stay. Like I said, he ran up and said, I'll have my own reunion special. Let me up in this gig. And he came in and kicked the door in. I said, oh, Jamal. Okay. Very interesting. Now, Jamal, you a little, you, you not know... You don't strike me as a tough man. You strike me as a man who thinks, because I don't think you're pretty, but thinks that you're pretty and that maybe you screw good and, and that's your claim to fame. But tough, I don't get tough from you. So I didn't get that whole thing about you being, I'm from Baltimore. What does that mean? I'm from Baltimore. I hear people say that all the time. Hell, I'm from Pittsburgh, and. But for some reason in the world, that's supposed to mean something. I'm from Baltimore. Your ass whoops, just like everybody else. <laughs> know that. Know that. You live in Baltimore, your ass whoops, just like everybody else in all the rest of the states and the cities. Do you understand? Your ass ain't no better. It will whoop, just like everybody else's. But, you know, I digress. Oh, yeah, I'm on some bullshit. <laughs> but it's okay. Continue listening. Anyway, so you throw out there that you're from Baltimore. All right, Pastor, what's that supposed to be? And I said, okay, so you tough now. You're from Baltimore. And then you told the people that you had their address. Pastor, I don't want you to write no check that you can't get into the damn tithing plate now. You got their address. And what that mean, Jamal? What that mean? You better watch it. I said, ooh, hold, hold on, Pastor. Is you talking too fast? Then he went on and then he started doing the regular old pastor thing. Honey. He went on over there and he said, he gave this whole shameless plug about the school, the, uh, the, the church's outreach program. And I just thought that was pretty funny. I cracked him. I said, listen, when it comes to church, trust me. I've always said church is business and green, green, green is the color. It don't mean a thing if it doesn't come in green. Brought it right on back around to a shameless plug for the church. Okay. Okay. We're doing this, we're doing that, and, and we're doing all... Th this ain't about that. This is the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion special, pastor's edition. We don't give a damn about what the church is outreach and who you feed and all that old shit. You just threw that right on in there because you just can't help yourself. Because that's what pastors did. All that old sideways begging and, and, and bragging. Child, I was a mess. I said, Pastor, you good. You good, Pastor. So listen to this. The spoiler alert. 
So you told us that Chris is going to basically base up at Giselle and Robin this Sunday coming. We'll see. We'll see. But I know Bravo, Bravo Andy probably really going to appreciate that. I ain't shoot do no goddamn spoilers on my show, freak. So I kind of laughed at that. I said, Giselle, that's not a good look, sis, for you. That ain't a good look. And then I have one last thing. So, Monique, you ain't in the clear either. You ain't in the clear either. Because what does the future look like for you and Chris? What does the future of the Real Housewives of Potomac look like for the Samuels? Because now you got Candace, who doesn't want to film with you, who refuses to film with you. Though she could be made to film with you because all of the legal stuff got thrown out, so it doesn't really mean anything. You know, she basically is up for a new ass whooping and kind of like, you got it in your mind, I know. Like, I can whoop her ass. I, I really get that bitch this time. You know, because everything got thrown out. And she already been on, ca on camera picking. She come into the reunion picking. I said, girl, you setting yourself up, honey. And if you ain't learned no jujitsu or nothing from last time, girl, she'll you up again, bitch. But anyway, so you got that. You got Candace that don't want to film with you. And then now we got Chris, who are the women going to be in a position where they say, oh, we're afraid. We don't want to film with him. What does the future look like for the Samuels? All of this is really juicy. All of it. I don't know, but I sure am enjoying myself. That's what I had to say about it. I know a lot of folks was asking me, what do you think? That's what I think. That's what I ran into in my travels. Y'all hit the comments. Let me know what's on your mind. Um, let's chat.